I'm Melina Hammer, and I'm an award-winning food stylist and photographer, recipe developer, cookbook author, and the owner of the Hudson Valley Getaway Catbird Cottage. I'm making brown butter pasta with butternut squash, sage, and walnuts today. I'm using beautiful squash right for the season and some aromatics like cayenne pepper, a little bit of nutmeg and sage, and brown butter is involved. Who doesn't love brown butter? It all comes together really quickly in the all-clad D3 fry pan. I am going to saute the squash first. I'm going to brown the butter afterwards. And then when it's all ready, I'm going to toss the pasta into the finished dish. And it's just me gorgeous dreaminess in the pan. I can't wait to make it. Let's get started. So I'm going to have this gorgeous squash. Anytime you've got an especially large squash, Start at the center so that you've got some leverage to lean your knife down so that you can dismantle it easily. And I feel like even though I haven't cut fully through yet, I've done enough that I can just do that. Just scrape out the stringy bits and then you're gonna peel the squash. Sometimes the squash skin isn't so tough, but because I'm only cooking the squash for a brief time in the pan, knowing that this isn't gonna be Something to consider just makes it that much easier. I'm gonna slice this in half lengthwise just to make the slices more manageable once they're finished cooking. It's basically bite-sized pieces. So similar thickness. I'm actually gonna start heating the pan so that when I'm finished with this, we're ready to go. So, a little bit of olive oil drizzled in the pan. I'm just gonna tilt the pan each direction to make sure it's well coated. And then add my squash slices. I'm gonna keep a good eye on these so that when they start to become a little translucent and maybe some brown at the edges, then turn them. A little season with salt, a little bit of fresh nutmeg. It's awesome in bechamel, it's excellent in tarts and galettes, fabulous in cocktails. Because butternut squash is buttery, but very mild, I love adding aromatics to give the squash a little more character. It's all going on pasta, so pasta as a form is beautiful, but it's also a really neutral kind of flavor. So to give flavor early on as I'm sauteing the squash, means that at the end, when I'm eating, these things will sort of atmospherically give a little more oomph and wonder and maybe even something that's not so discernible, but that's delicious. This is a little cayenne pepper, so sizzling. I love how this pan conducts heat. I'm gonna see some beautiful browning in just a couple minutes. In a certain way, I think when you can start to really smell the squash, that's when it's ready to turn. These are ready. So I'm just gonna turn these and give them a couple more minutes. That sort of buttery caramelization is coming through and it's just the beginning. I like to season both sides when I'm cooking. So I'm gonna, once again, do a little bit of nutmeg. Excellent earthy spice note. A little bit of this cayenne. So then a little more salt. And I'm gonna add a little bit of cracked pepper. These are gonna be ready in a second. Now that the pan is really hot, I'm adding a little bit more of oil to it to keep everything sauteing and not burning. When they start to feel slightly soft, give a little bit, that's when they're ready to be removed. I like to handle all the pieces as gently as possible because I want them to be as pretty once they're plated as they are at the outset. So now that the first batch is cooked, I'm gonna add the second batch. All of these slices are beautifully cooked. Remove them and get ready for some brown butter action. Here is the fun part. I love browning butter. It is such a fancy seeming 
term or preparation, but it's really ultra simple. If you can swirl a pan, you can make brown butter. So I basically just add this beautiful stick of butter and I want every last bit to be in the pan. So I'm just gonna add this little remainder and let it do its thing. I have it on a medium high heat right now because I want to accelerate to the melting, foaming part of the melt. And after the foaming subsides, I'm going to turn the heat to medium so that I can control more readily how the butter progresses. But this is glorious, isn't it? You go swimming in this. So now you can see how the butter is foaming and making its the beginning of the separating of the milk solids. I'm gonna turn the heat a little bit lower, medium heat. And now I'm gonna just start swirling the pan every so often. Awesome thing about this all clad fry pan is that because it's got a light colored surface, you can really see how the color of the butter shifts as it cooks. You'll also be able to smell it. So the nuttier that it smells, the closer that you are to it being ready. See how the bubbling changes from larger bubbles to this like almost like foam. It's kind of magical. And swirl. While the butter is browning, I'm gonna get the pasta going because I know I wanna drag the pasta as soon as it's done straight from the pot to the pan when the brown butter is finished. So season the water generously with salt. Bring it back to a rolling boil and then add the pasta. Cook your pasta basically according to the package instructions, but al dente is always a good rule of thumb. And in stirring it, I feel like you can develop a sensibility. When the noodles texturally against that spoon feel softer, it's like, oh yeah, it's time. Right around the centermost area of the pan, you can really see now that the butter's changing. The milk solids are separating and I'm gonna do a little swirl, turn the heat down so that it doesn't burn, and continue until the body, the whole volume of the butter has that sort of deeper, nutty, gorgeous hue. This is starting to look really quite beautiful. Smells incredible. I'm gonna add my walnuts and sage now so that they get a little bit of kiss by all that delicious buttery surface. Doing a little swirl so that every surface is coated. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper here. I feel fall in this room. As the sage cooks in this brown butter, it really becomes this mellow, incredible, earthy flavor. So I feel like you can't really add too much. Be generous, if you love herbs, this is an excellent place to be abundant with sage. And once it's coating the pasta, it's just gonna feel like a big hug as you take each bite. Now that the pasta is ready, I'm gonna transfer it directly into the all clad fry pan. It is al dente and any extra pasta water that might be dripping from the noodles. I'll, I don't want all of it but I'm a little bit more hurt and it'll help enrich the sauce that the brown butter has produced. So just gonna get everybody in here. I've turned the heat under the pan off. I don't need to cook anything further. Plus the brown butter is hot. So I'm just gonna drag the pasta through and fold the elements to coat all of the noodles. Once the brown butter is coating all this delicious pasta, I'm gonna add back in the squash. This looks gorgeous. And one last little bit of salt and pepper. And then just I use the back of the tongs because I don't want to mar the squash at this point. So I'm just sort of pushing them around to incorporate everybody so that it's a nice melange. And then I can plate it directly from the pan. 
It smells so good. Now that it's ready, I'm gonna go plate. It's really fun for me to think about how it came together on the stove, all in the all clad pan. And the whole time, even though the pan is hot, the handle stays completely without issue. I don't have to even think twice about it. I'm gonna get in, I'm plating this beautiful dish. So make sure you get all that deliciousness redistributed and pull from the bottom so that some of that wonderful luscious brown butter is sure to be on your plate. A little bit of everything makes a nice dish. Since the sage is the smallest element, it's easy for it to be obscured. And so now I feel like I've got a good mix, maybe just a little bit more walnuts. I'm hungry today. I can't wait to dive in. This brown butter pasta looks so good. Let's see how it is. Mmm. Mm. This is sustenance meets decadence, and it is so good. Find the recipe at Food 52.